You're listening to the Dynamic Thinking Project podcast. This is episode 35, and today's topic is Inside the Minds of Billionaires and Psychopaths. Hey everyone, Adam Musselli here. Welcome to the Dynamic Thinking Project podcast. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. This podcast is released every Friday, and show notes are found at the website, themindtechinstitute.com. It's all one word. Come back often and feel free to add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. All links are in the show notes and website. And now, let's get started. This is an interesting episode. In this episode, we're going to learn some of the traits of the rich and powerful people And also see the common traits between the rich, especially who are in power, and psychopaths. Uh, Yes, you heard that right. There are common traits between wealthy people and psychopaths. And no, I'm not saying every rich person is a psychopath, but there are some common denominators between them, especially the rich people who are in power. And let's not lie to ourselves. Most people would love to be billionaires, even if they don't know why or how they would spend their fortune. But the unlucky reality is that your chances of making or getting $1 billion worth of assets within your lifetime are very slim. I mean... Really, let's put emotions and motivations aside now and get logical with some statistics. You see, the current world population is 7.6 billion people. And according to Forbes and other sources, there are only 2,043 billionaires in the world today, meaning the chances of becoming a billionaire is 0.000027%. So that's 0.4027%. So should you just give up now? No, because you can, of course, increase your chances. And we are talking about billionaires here, not millionaires. A million these days isn't too hard to achieve if you have the right strategy. So just to be clear here again, we are talking about billion, not million. Billionaires are not like you and I. Their behaviors and actions are very different and somewhat unusual. And statistics shows that copying, or as we call in NLP, modeling their behaviors will not guarantee that you will become a billionaire but it does increase your chances. Firstly, billionaires are patient. They are patient, far more patient than the average person. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett once said, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. Most people want success overnight, and it's easy to feel like you have failed if you don't achieve it, of course. And one's natural instinct is to beat yourself up over failure or just over slow growth. But patience is the key to success. The world's wealthiest individuals are no strangers to failure too. And of course, having to wait. And sometimes they wait for decades just for success to come along. Let's take, for example, Bill Gates, the richest person on the planet now, as on record, of course. And of course, you've heard of Microsoft, but here's a question for you. Have you heard of something called traff or data? No? Of course not. That's because it was a huge failure. Traff or data was Mr. Gates' first company. Its goal was to read the raw data from uh, uh, roadway traffic counters 
and create reports for traffic engineers. So Gates thought his genius idea would improve traffic and end it forever. But the, the technology didn't work and it failed miserably. But Gates had patience and persistence. And from the ashes of Trafo data, Microsoft was born. And since then, Microsoft has created three billionaires and over 12,000 millionaires. James Dyson created an incredible 5,127 vacuum prototypes over 15 years before he finally took his first bagless vacuum to the market. I mean, I could give you Thomas Edison as an example, but I rather give the credit to Nikola Tesla. There are also uh, small everyday behaviors that most billionaires share. These billionaires and successful people or actually wealthy people, they are all early risers. And many have reported they wake up around 4.30 in the morning. And according to research, the majority or the vast majority of billionaires are usually awake by 5.30 a.m. You see, our brains are at their best in the morning. And without the distractions of people and, uh, and family obligations, it's amazing what one can accomplish in just one day. You must be thinking now, well, if all these billionaires are waking up so early, well, they must be going to bed early too. Well, actually, no. These individuals have the rare ability to function at maximum capacity on very little sleep. A study identified a small group of people, roughly around 2% of the uh, population, who can function and live very happily on very little sleep, just a few hours each night. And I'm not talking about willpower and determination here, though researchers actually found that these people carry a, a mutation of a gene called HDEC2. And when researchers gave the same gene to mice, they found that the mice began to sleep less, just like the human subjects. So it is a biological gift for a lucky 2% that uh, have been named the sleepless elite. And what's even more amazing is that these same people tend to be highly successful. Many millionaires, billionaires, prime ministers, and uh, presidents, and people who are in power have been found to possess this gift of not needing much sleep. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Leonardo da Vinci are just few who were known to have this unusual gift. Although there are some successful people who didn't have this genetic uh, gift, yet they actually forced themselves to sleep less so they could get more done. For example, Margaret Thatcher, she trained herself to only sleep for four hours every single night, and I tell you, it all becomes a habit. We humans, we are creatures of habit. So once you keep doing something over and over again, yeah, maybe in the beginning it, it's a little bit hard, but then it becomes a habit, and then it becomes part of your routine. But if we put these uh, smaller attributes of billionaires aside, there is one major glaring trait you absolutely must have to become very wealthy. You see, to control such a large portion of the world's wealth, you have to be a psychopath or at least a sociopath. Now, I'm not being a psychophanatic, but most billionaires are clinical psychopaths. Sam Wicken is uh, head of uh, business research at Oxford Economics. He has long studied and also wrote a book about the world's wealthiest 1% and the common factors that uh, they share. 
And in all his time studying hundreds of wealthy tycoons, he discovered one common factor. They are all willing to absolutely do anything to gain market monopoly and ruthlessly force their competitors into the ground or out of the game. And once again, I am not saying all billionaires are serial killers. But like serial killers, most are unable to feel empathy. This helps them to make difficult decisions that uh, may harm others, but will advance their own goals. And if you have studied neurolinguistic programming or NLP with us, we also teach in the NLP master practitioner level something called values. Values is where you study people's psychological and behavioral uh, progression and also knowing where you are on that chart. And of course, that helps you to move up quicker on that chart or as in your social and behavioral development. More information about that can be found at the mindtechinstitute.com. Click on the online uh, courses tab and you can also uh, study NLP and many other courses totally online. Also, uh, criminal psychologist Robert Herr famously discovered through his research that 1% of the general population are categorized as psychopaths. However, over 10% of financial traders, stockbrokers, and bankers are psychopaths. Now, I just want to clarify something here. Being a psychopath it doesn't mean you're going to massacre your family or friends or someone with an axe or a chainsaw. Psychopathy is simply a condition that... Uh, that easily can be diagnosed by, for example, having traits such as being superficially charming, being highly manipulative, and uh, able to con others, uh, completely lack of empathy or remorse, and the willingness to take large risks. There is another common trait between wealthy and powerful people and psychopath is egotism. Egotism is also a common denominator between the two. Nobel economic prize winner and uh, psychologist Daniel Kahneman tracked the achievements of 25 wealth advisors over eight years, and he found that their success was a total illusion. The consistency of their performance was zero. Also, superficial charm. Here is a question. Do senior leaders rise to the top because their judgment, because their vision and management skills are superior to anyone else in the company? Or do they get there by manipulating others through charm, deceit, or a sense of entitlement? Well, there is a study uh, published by Psychology, Crime and Law tested the psychological traits of 39 senior managers and uh, chief executives from leading British uh, business and compared these results to those of convicted criminals. The business executives tested similar to the convicts of uh, certain indicators of psychopathy. The managers actually scored higher for several characteristics that companies value and reward, and of course including skills of flattering and manipulating powerful people, a strong sense of entitlement, and the willingness to exploit others, and most importantly, a lack of conscience. Another common trait is lack of remorse. Psychopaths are usually very charming and charismatic but show little remorse when their actions harm others. A psychopath often blame others for the things he or she does or the negative outcomes of their behavior. Also, they are selfish. It makes sense that the rich can afford to be more generous and would thus be more likely to give more than those who are less well off. But a recent study shows that the reality is the opposite. An experiment by Paul Piff and the Berkeley research team 
suggested that it's the poor, not the wealthy, who are more inclined to charitable giving. The team observed that the generosity of team participants increased as their economic status fell. Those who ranked themselves at the bottom of the ladder gave away 44% more than the participants who ranked themselves at the top. Follow-up experiments showed that those in lower classes felt greater responsibility to donate uh, a portion of their salary to charity, naming an average rate of 5.6% of income as the reasonable amount to donate, versus the upper-class participants' donation rate of 2.1%. The final test also showed that lower-class participants consistently displayed spontaneous compassion, while upper-class participants had to be prompt to display compassion. Dr. Piff concluded that the increased generosity among the lower-class participants might be essential for this group to survive hard times. Another common denominator is unethical behavior. Upper-class people are more likely to behave unethically than lower-class people. And according to a series of studies uh, from the National Academy of Science of the United States of America, data from the study suggested that unethical behavior was supported by more favorable attitudes toward greed. The series of studies showed that upper-class participants were more likely than poorer participants to break the law while driving, to exhibit unethical decision-making, to take valued good from others, to lie during negotiations, to cheat to increase their chances of winning, and to endorse unethical behavior at work. Also, and another trait is, They are prone to boredom. Psychopaths love to live life in the fast lane. Living on the edge gives them the sense of danger and excitement they they crave. Many psychopaths commit crimes or hurt others just for the thrill of it. Anything mundane, boring and repetitive doesn't excite them and they will quickly lose interest. But perhaps there is a reason billionaires are psychopaths. Because it's what required to make it to the top. In a crazily competitive capitalist society, only those who are willing to take large risks and skirt around the edges of the law, perhaps even break them from time to time, are going to gain that competitive edge needed to eliminate the competition and monopolize the market. Think of Facebook, YouTube, Google, Amazon. They are so widely successful and are able to grow with astonishing velocity because they have no effective competitors and that's the way they like it. Warren Buffett pays income tax only 0.018% of his $74.2 billion worth of assets whilst the rest of us are paying between 23 to 60% of tax. And then there are the billionaires that made their wealth from poisoning the waters with nuclear waste, uh, all the South American drug cartels, those who got wealthy on blood diamond, and of course, the billionaires who made their wealth building and selling arms and orchestrating wars for profit, used to slaughter millions of innocent people, of course, for profit. To do these things without remorse, one has to have a degree of psychopathy about them. This doesn't mean that all billionaires are bad people. That's quite the opposite. But there is an undeniably a certain power and money-hungry quality and specific set of attributes required to make that wealth. But of course, 
the best way to increase your chances of becoming a billionaire is not by studying and copying other sick billionaires' behaviors, but by getting out there and putting your every fiber into whatever you are passionate about. And once again, if you are interested in becoming a fully qualified NLP practitioner, hypnotherapist or counselor, you can visit our website mti.edu.au or simply go to the mindtechinstitute.com. And by the way, all our diplomas are internationally recognized and accredited as the Mindtech Institute is an accredited institute and it's based in Australia. And of course, you can study any course you like online. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, as usual, you can email me. The email is on our website, themindtechinstitute.com. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe, especially if you are listening to this podcast on YouTube. The Dynamic Thinking Project podcast is released every Friday. Until next time, take care and enjoy your weekend. This is Adam Muselli, signing out.